Before we continue building the user interface for the Quest system, first of all, we're going to give Granny a little bit of guidance on where she can find the locations of these uh, events that we need to visit on our Quest. So we will build a compass bar across the top of the screen, very much like the one that you see in Skyrim, if not um, as pretty as the one in Skyrim. But it'll have a bar and then it's going to have a little needle that goes back and forward. So let's add that in now. In the hierarchy, right click, go down to UI and you want to add in a raw image. You'll get a square image like that there. Then just call this something like compass bar that'll do just so you know which one is which it will automatically come attached to a canvas do not delete the canvas it is basically everything that's going on user interface wise on the screen if you haven't used the UE system before these are just the things that come with it there's another thing called the event system which will automatically pop up in your hierarchy as well again do not delete that either okay that's going to register any clicks or button pushes or whatever else you want to do as far as the user interacting with that interface now one thing i will just point out if you do delete your canvas because it gets in such a mess that you don't like it anymore the event system will be left behind when you create a new canvas you'll end up getting two event systems make sure you delete one okay make sure that you've only ever got one in this hierarchy because it will cause you problems down the track so it's just good practice to get rid of both of them if you need to get rid of the canvas now with this compass bar we want it to be positioned up the top and stretched across the top so select it then over in the inspector in this um, rec transform box that's at the top you want to click on that then you want to hold down your alt key this will allow you to move it around and basically kind of snap it in place. We want to snap it to the top. So you can click on that and you'll see it snaps to the top. But we want it to stretch and snap to the top, which is this one here. And you can see that it's just done that on my screen. To find this uh, user interface over in your scene, if you click on the little 2D button, it will take you into that user interface mode and if we zoom out a bit actually I might just double click on my compass bar to see if we can find it there it is so you can now see that on the screen again if you're not familiar with the user interface this rectangle here is basically your screen resolution in the game you can see that the bar is at the top here the 3d environment is sitting down here now in this scene view the user interface element and the 3d environment are not aligned and they're not to scale with each other okay you just imagine they don't even know about each other so don't try and scale things on here with the interface thinking that they're going to scale down here on the train that's not the case whatsoever you're interested in getting all of the elements that are sitting inside of this resolution window looking good in the game so having both of those open at the same time is probably a good idea Something else that we will set in here is also the way that the canvas is rendering things. So if you select canvas, then you want to come over to the inspector and we're going to go down to the canvas scaler and change that to scale with screen size. That will then allow us to modify the screen size and see how that bar stays at pretty much the same scale which is really nice for us you want to do that first before you start resizing things in here uh, otherwise you'll change it these scales will all change and then you'll have to do the whole thing again um, so once you've done that we want to actually make this compass bar a little bit smaller so you can just click on it there and over at the top of the uh, menu system for unity this button here with the little dots on the corners will give you dots on the corner of your ue element now i want this to be like a thin bar that's not right at the top of the screen and that comes in just a little bit like that now remember it's anchored to the top and stretching out so even though we've now made this nice little gap around it if we then do this all those gaps scale as well for us 
All right, so uh, with that done, you might want to change the color, which is quite simple. St uh, click on the compass bar. Then in the inspector, you'll see that there's a texture. Currently got none there. I've added some textures in with Granny. And if we go down to the textures folder, you'll see the arrows that we're going to use in a minute. And I'll just use this blue dot that I've got here and drag and drop that up there as the texture and gives me a blue bar. So you can put any sort of PNG file that you want up here to color that. Now we need another image to act as our little compass needle on here. So on the canvas, we will not change its name, but we will right click and add in another raw image. And we'll call this the compass needle. My typing is atrocious today. Okay, so we've got that there. What we're going to do in the Rect Transform, as we did before, is click on that and we'll anchor it to the top, but we won't be stretching it. So it's the Alt or Option key on the Mac, and that will pop it up to the top. Now, before you go about positioning it exactly where you want, you might want to put the image on it. So if we just select it, and I'm going to put this green one on it, which happens to be upside down. So I'll show you how to fix that. Drag and drop that over onto our textures. Okay, so it's like that. If you want to resize it at this point, you can. Um, over in the scene view, you can grab hold of the corners and just make it however big you want it to be. Then at that point, you can also go back and re-snap it into the middle. Alt and then that button there. Uh, now to turn it upside down, in the Rec Transform, you want to find the rotation for the Z and rotate it by 180 and that will turn it around. Now you can see that this arrow is probably maybe a little bit too high for my liking. So I can then grab it in the scene and I want to grab the whole thing, not the anchor point. So don't grab this blue bit in the middle and don't grab that daisy wheel thing at the top there and then move it to where you want it. So, you know, I want to keep it dead in the center and I want to keep it maybe just about there. So now we have a needle that will be able to slide back and forth along this blue bar. Now it's time for some code to link all of this stuff together. Let's put it, let's put it in the quest folder. So I'm just keeping all of this code together here. Uh, we'll right click, create a new C sharp and we will call it compass controller. Then we'll edit that and into it, no, I don't want to update Visual Studio. Into it, we're going to add in this code here, which I'll go through for you. So we have our usual libraries at the top. Our compass controller is a mono behavior. So this compass controller is pretty much self-contained and completely separate from the quest system. So you could use it for other purposes. And so tried to keep the code very segregated in this case and not referred to any quests or anything um, related to events and that. We have at the top some game objects we need to know about in order to position the arrow. First of all, we need to have access to the arrow itself, which I'll call pointer. We then need to have the target object of where we want our pointer pointing towards. And then we also need to know where the player is so that we can calculate the angle the player is from the target and then apply that to the pointer. So if the player is heading straight towards the target, the pointer should be right in the center of the screen above Granny's head. Now, we also need to get hold of the compass line, which is our blue line that we put on the screen, because we want to use the extent of that compass line for scaling how far that uh, pointer is going to move back and forward across the screen. So in that way, you could actually make that compass line a lot smaller. You could have it in the middle, really small. You could have it over one side of the screen, really small. Um, this will all scale down for you. The other thing I'm going to get is the rect transform that's on the pointer. And I'm just grabbing it in the start, you can see here, just to make it a little bit easier on the typing later on, instead of having to type out this whole 
rect transform get component thing we can just use rect now before I go in and show you what's inside the update code I just want to talk about how it's going to work first of all we have our bar across the top now it's going to represent that we are definitely facing the target object at zero or right in the center of the screen and at either extreme of the screen we want to be facing 90 degrees away from that object now if we look at working this out we want to find the angle between granny's forward facing direction and the direction to the target so then once we've got that all we need to do is figure out where that angle is on the little compass bar across the top and so that means that between the middle of the screen and the end of one of the blue bars is 90 degrees in a scale as such and therefore we need to translate that from the angle let's say it's like 45 or something to where that arrow should be positioned using the world coordinates um, and also to screen coordinates of all the bits and pieces involved. So what does this look like in the code? Well, it's down in the update. Let's now have a look what's in there. It's not a lot of lines of code, but they're all very important in what they're doing. First of all, we're going to create a vector three array and call it V. What gets stored in here are the local coordinates of the endpoints of your compass bar. So just move this up. These four corners of that bar get stored into this array called V. And you can get them using a method called get local corners and fill up the value of V. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to get the scale or the length in this case between one end and the other. Now, as the corners get put into that array, you'll find that the bottom corners of your rectangles are in position one and two. And therefore this distance here will be the distance from one side of the screen to the other with respect to that bar, not the screen size itself, but however you've set that bar. Next, we're going to work out the direction to our target. Now, at this point, if you've been going through all the sections and tutorials that we've covered so far, even in the different sections, we've done this over and over again, and it's called difference in some of the other tutorials, I'm calling it direction this time, but it's finding that vector that's going to get you from your current facing direction to the direction you want to be facing in. So we take the position of the target, whatever that may be, and minus the player's position to get that. We then work out with this vector what the angle to the target is. And we can get that with this vector3.signed angle method, which is really handy. Usually if you try and work out the angle between two vectors, you're going to get a positive number. So you won't know whether you need to turn left or you need to turn right. But this signed angle will give you a negative or a positive angle to work with, which is really nice. This kind of thing didn't used to exist way back when. So you had to use like a cross product and dot product to figure out which way you were facing and then which way you needed to turn. And uh, Anyway, this is just way easier. So with signed angle, we're giving it the player's forward vector, the vector to the target from the player. And then we also need to tell it what our sort of frame of reference is going to be because we're in 3D space. So how are we going to turn from one vector to the other? And in this case, we want to turn around the player's up facing vector so that granny has to turn on the spot to get from one um, vector to the other because you can turn in all sorts of directions but this is going to give you that angle now what we're not doing that we did previously as far as working out directions and positions and forward facing was to use a lerp and automatically make things turn towards a target but we're not doing that this is up to the player completely to turn granny around we only want the angle so that we can then use that to position our little compass needle on that bar. 
So what we first need to do is to take the angle that we're calculating, which is angle to target here, we're going to set it to a clamp of that angle between negative 90 and 90 so that it's not going to go off the screen. It's going to stop on one end and stop on the other divided by 180 and multiplied by our pointer scale. Now our pointer scale is the length of that compass bar that we have along the top and that's going to position the little pointer in just the right position for you. We then take this angle to target and we use it to set the X value in the rectangle's local position. Remember this rect is the rect transform that is sitting on our pointer which is you can see just up here at the top of the code. The X value is going to slide it back and forth left and right across the screen. So we can change that with our angle. We will then also make sure we leave it at the current Y and the current Z position. All right, it's time to try this out. So save it. We will go back into Unity. You will need to create an empty game object in your hierarchy and let's call it uh, compass. And onto the compass, drag and drop your compass controller script that you just created before. And you'll find that you've got a whole bunch of exposed values that need to be set up. The first one is the pointer. So that's our compass needle. So we'll drag and drop that on. Then we need a target. We don't have that yet. We'll come back to it. The player is Granny. So we'll get Granny and put her into there. And the compass line, which is our bar. Let's put that into the very last one. Now we need a target to test this out with. So let's go over to the scene and we'll put this target just a little way away so we can't actually see where it is, which makes it a little more challenging and also gives us a good test whether our compass is going to work. So right click in your hierarchy, add in a cube and then just sort of position it wherever you would like to have it. Maybe make it a bit bigger so it is obvious when you get there what it is. And then with that cube, select the compass again and drag and drop your cube into the target position. All right, so now we're ready to give this a go. So press play and we should see that our needle now snaps over to this end because the cube is over in this particular direction and it's further than 90 degrees from our facing direction. So if we turn like this, you'll see that the needle now comes more into the center. And if we move forward from this point, we know, we hope that we're going to run into that cube eventually. And I can see it coming up in the distance there. So that's our Skyrim-esque compass pointer. When we come back in the next video, we'll start integrating this with our quest system and build all the user interface elements for it. Thanks for watching. Please support the development of more superb online learning content by subscribing. And as always, visit holistic3d.com to learn more about awesome games development books and tutorials.